So again, my name is Alberto. Hi, everyone. I think we've met before. And uh, this is a presentation about uh, yeah, Ansible AWX. Uh, does that make sense to anyone? Yeah. Uh, just hold that thought, OK? So um, yeah, I have to tell you this. Um, I'm. Um, Terrible liar. So do not. Um, I don't even know if my name is actually what I just said. So um, this is all bullshit. Oh, okay. Do not follow any advice I give. If you do, it will blow up on your face. It's your fault. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> With that out of the way, um, this is AWX. It's a user to call Ansible Work X at first, which sounds like a name they made to fit an um, acronym they already had. Then after Red Hat got them, they were enabled to Ansible Web Executable. Again, same. So it uh, provides a web-based user interface, REST API, and task engine built on top of Ansible. It's one of the upstream projects for Red Hat. You got it. It's um, well, it's the community version of uh, Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. And well, with those acronyms, I can ask you, oh, really? Oh, it's a terrible, terrible acronym. I don't like it. But it is what it is. And uh, yeah, it's a web interface. It has a RESTful API. And again, it's the community version. I will show you why I am repeating that. It's um, really community and not in the way we like, I'm afraid. So yeah, it is fast moving if you want. Enterprise, uh, wait for it. Anyway, um, why did I pick that uh, to you know torture myself? Oh, sorry, uh, to do. Because uh, we have a version, uh, I think it's from 19 at work, which in IT years is like a stone age or something. It works, it does its job there, and uh, checks alone, all right, but um, uh, some projects require me to update that, and I decided to make that, <clears throat> to take that project with all goodwill and uh, you know, with uh, confidence and uh, general enthusiasm. Again, uh, they mentioned them quite a few times, so I'll repeat that. Uh, you're not supposed to do an in-place upgrade. So I set out uh, to do it uh, properly, OK? So we are going to follow the instructions, right? That's what you do. You read the docs, OK? Well, we have a website. They say things. Other things, however, are not there. The first thing you know is uh, it's kind of a pig. So give it some RAM, otherwise it'll blow up in your face and not really tell you why or, well, I mean, you'll probably realize what's going on when system D, O, M, D, go, I don't like you, D, on you. And yeah, but um, I would love to uh, make those um, lame, lame, uh, humorless slides here all day. But um, honestly, at this point, I person, yeah. I mean, let's uh, figure out as we go, because honestly, that's uh, that's the way to go, right? That's how we do it. Uh, I mean, um, who needs documentation anyway? We just go do a make config, a make, 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 and um, that works very often, doesn't it, Trevor? Often. Often. And when it doesn't, what do you do? Try. <laughs> or? Troubleshoot. <laughs> just um, wipe it, start fresh, right? I mean, it's Docker after all, isn't it? What do you do? System prune, dash A, try again, or not. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not like we know what we are doing. That's the big feeling I get with this thing is um, I don't know what I'm doing. But uh, it kind of works, OK, when it does. When it doesn't, well, I mean, most of us here work in corporate IT, so we know uh, as long as we find someone to blame, we'll be OK. And now we begin, we go to a host that I named AWX because I am extremely creative. And uh, I recreated that VM, so it's screaming at me that uh, it's not secure. I do not care. And I don't know where I'm going. 
So here we are. Let's see where I'm at. No, that's not where I am. So you guys will give me a moment. I'll get this at a point, um, or should I do it from scratch? Uh, I don't know if you have, uh, we probably do have enough time. That's fantastic, it's rare. So we shall be. Uh, first thing you need to do with this thing, and um, I will open the docs because again, installation, no, I don't know how to type. Uh, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay, so uh, first thing, uh, it's uh, very nice to mention that um, this used to be like, uh, as most open source projects that have a corporate uh, paid for version, it's like uh, you can run it in your basement. And uh, if you want support, you pay for it. But then, thanks to Google, a lot of those guys, Everything now needs a cluster and run on Kubernetes because I mean, um, who cares if you all you have is a toaster? You gotta have Kubernetes. Everything is Kubernetes. I hate this name. I really think it's kind of eh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, but everything is Kubernetes. So this is not a thing that you're supposed to run anymore on its own because now you need Kubernetes. I mean, this is a glorified web UI for Ansible. As far as I'm concerned, not really. I'm I'm just being trying to be funny and failing miserably here, but the point is, uh, yeah, this is not uh, supposed to be run like this, but we are doing a test. Uh, see, it's only for development and task-oriented deployments. That wasn't always the case. This thing used it to be native uh, container, but uh, not really meant for all kinds. So that's the instructions you're gonna follow. I am not the person you want to look for for anything uh, Kubernetes. Uh, maybe I'll care, but uh, that's really not today. When, uh, if I ever get there, I'll let you guys know. But for now, uh, that's where we are. OK. So uh, pretty simple. Follow the instructions, right? So uh, let's do that. Uh, first thing, I will go back to this um, thing. Uh, wrong. Right? No, wrong again. Uh, right, okay, and um, so no, I don't have this account, so do I have a Docker here? No, I do not, I didn't do a thing, what a lazy bastard, okay. And so I quickly prep it uh, using my other box for You see, Ansible is kind of cool. You just go, type a few things. It does its thing. And you wait. And you wait. And you wait. And in the meantime, I will uh, make sure this is updated. Or, uh, yeah, that I did. And then uh, there are a few uh, things we need. Uh, and now I forget something. Oh, okay. I wonder if that can be done like this. It turns out it can. Great. Okay, so those are going on. And uh, we now should have a uh, Docker on this thing. So by the time this is over, I will be able to create a user. It's just something I do. You really shouldn't need to do that or whatever. Point is, so we will be getting there. Um, I do have another one that's kind of ready. Um, this thing is a little bit of a beast. It looks simple because it's just a front end for Ansible. But there are a lot of features. The interface is a little bit uh, confusing at first. Um, I mean, it's not like open source projects are famous for having good uh, user interfaces. So there's that. User and uh, G A D O Docker A W X. So okay, so we are here. Uh, let me just reboot this thing because I don't know where we're gonna land. 
after we are done. So let's uh, go back here and um, pick this guy. Very first command, seems simple enough. We are following the docs. Okay, the first thing I need to mention here before I go much further is that um, I'm not doing it uh, the proper way because uh, I was supposed to use one of these, but I don't do Fedora. Sorry, Trevor. I don't do Ubuntu. Sorry, Joubert, you're not here, but sorry. Uh, this is old stuff. I don't like eight. Eight is old. I don't like old. And what the hell, Mac OS? Get out of here. Okay. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I don't want to read this anymore. Anyway, so no, I am doing Alma Nine because uh, because yeah, because it's uh, possible. So um, I do that, and then we are going to do the comments. So you guys are going to trust me that the latest version here is 22.1.0. OK, because I'm not going to look. My neck is hurting a little. So um, I'm going to do git clone that should be 22.1.1, just uh, to show that I am not a bold-faced liar. And um, control C. Um, this morning at work, we were complaining how Copy and paste on Linux is very inconsistent. I don't know if anyone <laughs> relates to that, but um, if you do, know that you're not alone. Okay, so this is a thing, and it is cloning. And I did lots and lots of testing, but I will stick with what works because um, the first thing I must mention here is, um, you guys think I'm cloning this version, right? Because that's what it says here, isn't it? Tell me, pray tell me, clone the latest stable tag. Okay, I know, you guys gotta believe me that that tag is actually the latest stable tag. Oh man, I don't, uh, I don't think people trust me. I'll show you all, okay? Tags, 2210, aha, okay. Okay, so that's where we are. That's all here. And now I will go to this folder. And follow the instructions. I mean, that's uh, what I am paid to do. I am not really smart, okay? But um, I mean, ChatGPT will soon um, win over me, but uh, we are not there yet, so follow me, okay? Here are the main make targets. Okay, I'm not uh, bothering you with any of that because whatever, I leave life on the edge, okay? I don't care for passwords. Real men don't care about that. And um, blah, 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 okay. So, so lots of things we don't care about here. Anyway, let's uh, build this. Uh, Let's build this. Uh, where am I? I don't think I need this for now. Bye. Um, make Docker compose. Um, build. And uh, let's see where we land. Okay. Oh, well, it's downloading stuff. Uh, that takes a little while and doing some stuff. Any questions so far? I mean, so far so good. It's uh, follow the docs, right? X, Y, Z, go check latest tag, uh, git clone, prep some basic um, basic uh, dependencies, nothing crazy here. Pretty much, I, of course, I uh, ran a playbook, a playbook that sets up Docker on this host, but that's really not rocket science. It's just for brevity, like um, install Docker, community edition, and then follow the docs. We are here. And so far, it seems everything is uh, number go up, uh, stuff goes with a uh, very matri matrix kind of thing, you know. I have me on the hood here, I can kind of look the part another thing. Okay, all right. Yeah, lots of stuff. So there is no yum install version of this. Uh, okay, 
there is a guy working on it um and then he stopped it i was um i kind of related to why and i think uh, i was uh, worried about him and uh, since he's back now and uh, he has something that uh, seems to work but officially no no my uh, personal entirely uh, unqualified and generally um useless and uh, more likely than not um, disposable opinion about this is that this uh, Ansible is the carrot, this is the stick. Uh, Red Hat really wants you to pay for this thing. Like, I mean, you can use the CLI stuff, but if you want that, and I mean, I'm pretty sure there's something and now uh, we are going to get there because um, it's, um, yeah, it certainly has its uses and uh, I don't know how much they charge for it. It could be good. But this is not classic uh, Red Hat uh, in the sense that uh, like the community version is usually polished and usable. And if you want the support, uh, I mean, the, we'll get there, but um, let's say I feel that uh, they are with this particular project in my personal and uh, unqualified opinion, a little more firm on the side that, um, listen, if you're using community, it sucks and you gotta deal with it. It's testing. Alpha ish quality, not really. It's uh, it's it works after you get it up and running, it works. So that's not uh, the whole story, but um, don't expect uh, like uh, for you to keep it on like regularly updated and stuff. It looks like it's a little more involved than what uh, we are used to. Okay, so next step is uh, this guy. Okay, it's on the docs here. Um, see. This build comes at before and then compose. That's where we at. Oh, what? Okay, so stop everything. This is entirely self-inflicted. Docker compose. Oh, I didn't install Docker compose, right? No, wrong, because uh, this is the Docker C repo for Alma 9. It's like this. It's Docker space compose, not Docker dash. But that's easy to fix. And that's, again, no fault of AWX. That's uh, yours truly here, because I am not going to run old operating systems like a peasant. I have enough old crap in my life, such as myself. OK? So I change that, and I pretend that never happened. Oh, OK. All right. Whoa, all right, all right. Yeah, so seems that it's gone. First thing I need to say is um, the admin password will show up here at some point. You can create uh, an admin user after the fact, but um, it creates one for you and throws the password at you. But uh, we are going fishing soon. Let me see if it's up here. I do not remember. Oh, no, it's not here yet. No, it's not here yet. No, it's not here yet. All right, okay, okay. <laughs> If you folks spot the password, let me know. I'm trying to keep this interesting because it's very dull otherwise. Right? Okay. <laughs> what this is doing is building a bunch. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait. Don't go anywhere. Oh, God. Wait for me. Okay. So see, it spit out the password here, which I will, and hopefully the the uh, the like the clipboard won't uh, le let me down. And uh, soon after, you get a bunch of stuff. And uh, you see, you gotta be looking for it. Otherwise, you gotta scroll up, 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 and up. Okay. I don't know if it's still ready. Let me check on a machine that you guys can't see. So this way, I can keep looking smart. 
Oh, no, it's not here yet. Oh, maybe it is. Wait. Oh, hey, it looks like it's here. It looks like it's ready. Shall we, folks? So, uh, AWX, that's the long, long, long thing. And uh, the port, the default port. Again, I'm not doing it, but uh, uh, in an ideal world, you can set up a, a, a reverse proxy or something just to have it on the regular places and whatever you want to do. But uh, this is how it comes out of the box. And so it's self-signed, obviously. That's how they usually do it. So I want uh, to go and what the? Oh. I'm confused now. Okay, so let's go back to the docs. I mean, what else can we do, really? What else can we do? Did I close the docs? Oh, boy. Yes, I kind of did. Anyway, oh, hi. Um, okay, yes, running Docker. And um, this is a little too big. Better now, folks, I guess. Okay, so mm -hmm, where is it? Okay, so we are here, and then rubber, rubber, rubber. Okay, this is if you want to detach, which we are not there yet. Okay, but um, there's a bunch of things here and some diagrams. I I don't care because I yeah. Oh, okay. So we need to do this. It seems. I mean, they mention it as if um, as if I should have a clue, which I clearly do not. And so that's what you're gonna do: copy. And uh, I want to leave that uh, running because you must have that running. And I will have it uh, here. Oh. Okay, so and now we have another round of building. I know, right? I mean, the beauty of it is that you only have to do all that once. I mean, I could have skipped all that, but um, then um, how could I try to make terrible jokes? I could not, one, and second, um, we have time, so I mean, I gotta make it worth your trip to this uh, most joyful place. And uh, third, I would not be able to express how much I love it without showing you how involved it is. I mean, that's not exactly hard, but uh, again, it's clear that it's kind of, you know, take it or leave it in a way. Yes. I don't know if I did. Uh, that's a good question, and uh, I mean, we. It uh, really think I really think you know me, and uh, no, I did not. I lost it. So that means I have to go back here. Let's do it together. It's so much fun. Um, look at that, um, because um, you guys need to understand that the first few times I did it, um, I mean. Do you really expect that? Because I was waiting for it, but uh, that goes by fairly fast. And then uh, look, where the hell? I, at one point after doing this a million times, I noticed that it's, you see those apply, 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 apply? It's somewhere after that. Okay, but uh, that took me a while. I had a very, very, very entertaining weekend. And that's all for your pleasure. Isn't it fantastic? I'm a good friend, folks. I really am. So uh, let me save it um, somewhere. And uh, because I'm uh, extremely security conscious, you know what I'll do? You will not believe this voice. I will touch the password for my home folder. All right. That's very secure. OK. Um, nobody ever saw that. OK. Fantastic. But uh, I don't think I can care any less than I do. So whatever it uh, is going. And um, any other questions? That was a good question. I liked it. You saved my bacon here, but thank you. Anything else so far? Done for Docker? 
Oh, I mean, I would love for you to figure out a way to not do that crap. I really don't tell me. Please do. I, I, not only I, I, I beg you. I beg you. I mean, in theory, you should be able to extract everything it's putting in the container and run it natively, but oh, you'd have to whatever whatever parent image the container is running, you'd probably have to be exactly the same. Otherwise, you'd be in dependency hell. Look, after I saw a guy mentioning that uh, he wanted to some, run something in Docker that was bound for Kubernetes and uh, he had Docker running Kubernetes so he could run Docker or something like that. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit, okay? Well, now we know why it's hard for them to get an RPM dump on the repo. Because... Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, it was not for that particular project, as far as I remember, but I mean, the, this kind of thing go crazy, and I am only scratching the surface. One of the things I need to get more familiar with, and I am working on that, but uh, right now, when, when you mention something like that, I, I respect the instructions. Okay. Speaking of that, the instructions got us here. We should now have a GUI. And so I will do that. What? Oh, OK. New, no, new. No, I'm not 3D printing today, everyone. Um, Okay, there we go. Oh, you guys remember him, don't you? I mean, I didn't change anything. That's how it came out of the box, wasn't it? <laughs> Can I say, please do not use this in a corporate environment or anything that resembles it. I mean, I'm happy that my, uh, my workplace, people had a good sense of humor. I demanded to keep this logo, and they took me on that, <laughs> just for the loss, but for real. Yeah, there we are. That's how they deliver it to you. And uh, I expect all of you to have uh, figured out what they actually mean by that, which is, you know, like, um, take a hint. You're running a potato? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's not far away from the real unfiltered meaning, for sure. So, um, okay, let's go, potato, um, password. Um, I got it from my secure vault. <laughs> it's uh, here. And uh, yeah, so we have uh, this. Uh, this is not working well. So let me, uh, just give me a moment, everyone. Let me get these out of the way. All right. So if I do just that, oh, hello, okay. And now we are here. First thing I wanted to show you folks is um, a most interesting thing, which is, um, let me see if I find it uh, here about. Uh, that's not really the version I call now, is it? <laughs> is it? Is it? <laughs> It is not, because you're supposed to have a branch named, because uh, uh, when I cloned it, I end up with a detached head, and that's used by the make file for references to what's downloading. So I ended up downloading a bunch of containers that are development containers. Now, you may think, why did you do that if you're just telling us that? I mean, don't you know better? Just told you. You just told us why not make it work. You, you try and make it so that it references the proper stuff, it's all over the place. I couldn't find any documentation that broke, it blew up on my face. I spent the whole weekend trying to get a proper release tagged version working, and I could not for the life of me. So this is a web UI, it has a cow, and I can do something, I can present something to you, but if I wanted a release, I would not be able to, so I'm not, I'm not doing it, okay. Again, they are not, they didn't say that, but uh, my impression is, okay, you can use this. This is open source, but stay in your lane. This is not for a company, man. I mean, it really isn't. 
but it works. Okay, so um, I am. Um, I mean, it's a fair point. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Just so we are clear. I mean, I have nothing against Red Hat making money. They do a lot for the open source community for the free software movement. And um, but uh, in this particular case, yeah. It is a little involved. Uh, I'm sure there is a way. I mean, I'm not uh, the best, uh, the go-to person for anything when it comes to this kind of architecture. Someone would probably figure it out in five seconds. I asked a few people at work and they laughed at me and did just that. And hi, it's working. I'm like, uh, oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, you got it, right? Uh, this is not the version like um, we cloned a repo tagged to a particular version, that's not what we got. We got the develop, development snapshot. Fine. There are a few places I can show if anyone is interested, but um, I could not uh, make it work. I will probably revisit that just for science, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's where I stand. Just thought I would mention because it's um, it's a thing. Okay. So now we're here. It is a fairly nice UI. I like it. I like the potato. I don't know if you guys agree with me. I really do. I got fond of it, for real. What do you think, Trevor? You look entertained by it. Positive as potato. I mean, it's a little tricky, you know. I mean, I must say I was feeling a little bit like that after one point. So I, I could totally get where it's coming from. This, by the way, I think this was designed by the guy who is making the AWX RPM, and I am not even kidding. And soon after he did that, that's when he got like a two-year vacation or something. So I think he's trying to tell us something about AWX. Anyway, um, that's kind of a downer. That's not where I want to go. I want to get something in here. So how does this thing work? Um, first, everything is a project. Projects are what, um, when you have your Ansible, I'll have to draw heavily from Ansible. Usually you have your Ansible place so with a bunch of uh, playbooks, that's a project. More often than not, um, people have, um, let's say, per site or per project or per organization. It really doesn't matter. Point is, that's a project. So there is a project. Uh, it is on um, here. OK. And the demo project are a bunch of samples. I'm not using, I'm not using these, because otherwise I won't uh, be able to show much. What I do here is I'll add. My own. I'm always afraid of using this because I don't know if it's going to break anything on the back end. Am I being, uh, am I exaggerating? I don't know. Okay, that no, doesn't matter. Um, hmm. So here I say get and then, um, let me fill those in. Um, I mean, um, if you have your own. OK, so that uh, warrants some explanation. Uh, the whole idea of AWX is everything is in source control. That's the modern workflow. Um, if you have an Ansible and uh, point, you usually more often than not, you have it uh, synced to some Git repo or subversion or something. Ideally, you would just clone from that and do the same thing here. So um, that's why uh, you deploy it as a bunch of containers. It's, uh, it's just going to clone it there, but um, it really doesn't matter. The source of truth would be the Git repo where you have your stuff. That's uh, what I'm doing here. OK. And um, oh. oh, oh, I need to add this. OK, so let's add. Mm-hmm. Credential types. No, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Credentials, it's here. Okay. I'll add credentials for Git. We're going to call ourselves default because it's already there and I forgot to create an organization. Okay, so this is a 
first control credential. And I, of course, created this uh, before. So this is uh, your get uh, password or whatever. So now we can go back to our inventory, no, projects. Because again, uh, everything is, uh, organization is the first thing, is like the master of everything. And then you have a project inside of the organization, which you we have established that I, you use the one that came with it. So let's do the git again with, uh, Now that we have um, credentials, so again, this would be your stuff. Uh, this is just my example here. Now we have uh, credentials. And I'll keep it uh, fairly simple, okay. And hope it works. Suspense is killing me. Ah, finally something went right on this joint. Sweet, okay. And so we are here. And now we have um, this. I will delete this because I am now confident that I have something to show you guys. Okay, and now on to the next step, which is inventory. Now you could Create inventory here. Inventory in Ansible is uh, the host you're trying to deal with. I could, of course, uh, just add them here one by one, but I already have an inventory from Ansible that I want to use here. That's on the Git repo as well. Again, you could add it here if you wanted to. If you're starting from scratch, you can certainly do that. Okay, so. <clears throat> I will name it uh, with an extremely creative name or default organization. I don't know what that means. Um, hmm. so we have an inventory now, which I will add a source get inventory mm -hmm. now remember I cloned that um, repo there so I have a bunch of things that are there those are some of my playbooks and a bunch of other random thing. Uh, my credentials, you guys just thought I was doing that for funsies, right? Real men store their passwords in text files, man. I mean, for real. Okay, so this is a fine inventory. All right, and I will save that. Wow, I'm honestly surprised by that. Okay, so it uh, does look like we now have a project, which is a repo full of Ansible uh, playbooks and roles and whatever else, and an inventory that I imported from my host file that sits on my Ansible repo. Again, if I didn't have that, I would uh, come here and add them, but I imported them. As you can see, those are all my hosts and their groups and everything. I had that. I could um, just come here and add one by one. If you're starting from scratch, that's what you can do. Doesn't matter. 
it's just some. So, I mean, I needed something to show. So there is that. Uh, again, add, do it. One thing when you import is uh, that's in the docs. Uh, everything is imported. So that's where they came from. Okay. So now I can go and uh, do something with it. Uh, we have playbooks. We have inventory. So now we need a template. What is a template? A template is nothing more than uh, how to run a playbook. I understand I'm borrowing heavily from uh, Ansible terminology mm -hmm. here. It's kind of hard to explain this without uh, touching. I mean, it's, it is the Ansible web executable. So I apologize. Of course, if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to entertain that after or even on mail, later on the mailing list. Uh, we also have uh, Wyatt that's a lot better on Ansible than I ever will be. So um, we are in good hands, everybody. So um, I have this playbook. It's extremely creative uh, that I use to not reboot. Uh, that's later. I use to update my hosts because um, uh, I do lots of CISA administration duties. And when, when that's your job description, I mean, if you don't have DNF update, how do you make a living? Like, that's kind of uh, my bread and butter. So. It's nice to be able to run that on a schedule, right? And that's what I am going to do. Okay, so that is uh, here. What is this? I guess that uh, works for me. The playbook is, um, I have lots there, but uh, the one I'm looking for is this guy. This um, is a playbook that uh, goes on whatever host I have. And uh, if it's uh, RPM, it will run uh, DNF update, not YUM, DNF, because I don't run old crap. OK. And if it's uh, Debian or Red Hat oh, or Ubuntu, it will run APT, APT, APT. Pretty standard stuff. OK. So that's not going to work because we need credentials. And uh, so uh, that's one last thing we're missing, right? Uh, how am I logging into those hosts? I need another one here, not a demo credential, but I need a credential proper. Which is a machine credential. Because we fanciful USSH to host, right? So uh, how am I going to do this? I didn't tell it so far. I have playbooks. I have an inventory. I need a credential. I'm SSHing. I have to pass something. So that's what uh, we are going to do. Oh, it's root power. Because again, that's how we roll. We do not care. All right. And then I will have to get something to show. Now I went uh, back on all of my hosts and I added a key. And I will now. Um, Copy and paste it here, because YOLO. Yeah, very secret. OK. You can't see it anymore, though. I am positive we have everything you need now. And we shall try it again. And for that, I will create a template for a job. And that's uh, when I will, after that's done, because so far, everything here could be done on Ansible on the command line. I could just uh, hop into my Ansible a host and run update.yml. I even mark them as executable, because why not? Right? I just do update.yml. 
IML dot dot a dot a backslash update dot TML and uh so what's the point so far? None. It's uh, kind of dumb. And I am now running Docker and uh, wasting eight gigs of RAM on this thing. So really, make it worth my while. So far, it hasn't. But I don't know. I do not know. I wonder if this thing is going to work. Shall we take a look? I assume we can. Whoa, nothing works. A couple worked. I don't know why the others didn't. I will certainly take a look at that. Oh, I know why. Okay. That's because they didn't spread the love around. Okay, the key. What a dummy. I have a secret playbook to do that. You guys just wait for it. Okay, but that just shows a lot here. Um, you see, everything failed miserably. That's, uh, oh, one, two. That's another one here. Okay. We are going to run that again. So one of the nice things here is when it fails miserably, which it just did, I can run again, which I'm doing. So I just go to the template and run it, right? Uh, those hosts are all offline, so it's not a big deal for real. So here, it's just skipping all the hosts that are not uh, DNF. Oh, yeah, and then just running on the ones that are DNF because uh, that's the step of the playbook. Okay. It did fail because I have some hosts offline. That's entirely on me. And uh, seems that one host was updated and um, these guys, I did not uh, get uh, the new key in because uh, there are reasons for that. I'm not gonna go into details and some of those are just turned off. Okay. The thing is, um, I have this now here, and I can, and that's one of the biggest draws. First, I have logs. Of course, you can have logs when you use Ansible on the command line. But uh, here, I can search for, let's say, a particular machine and see that um, it failed or whatever. So you have some parsing here on a nice web GUI, which is certainly cool. And um, the other thing is, uh, instead of uh, using cron or some uh, hickety do thing like that, I can have this on a schedule along with everything that comes with it. You know, so I can potentially just uh, add this here and have this template uh, run. On a schedule. So I'm not only going to run a playbook, I'm going to run a playbook on a schedule and have all the logs and they are searchable. And I mean, of course I'm scratching the surface here, but my point is to show what's uh, the benefit from it coming from like a good uh, bog standard Ansible on the command line. The other thing which is what um, motivated me to even uh, start uh, messing with it is um, you can, for example, hook that to LDAP, and then um, let's say I have a box with a bunch of uh, VMs for users of uh, my organization, and I want them to be able to refresh these if uh, they are doing something that, uh, let's say, if they download a virus or mess with it, or they just want it fresh, or whatever is the use you have for something that can be manipulated with a playbook. This whole structure of a projects, credentials, and everything else, you can create users and you can delegate particular environments, playbooks, inventories to those groups. So you can have Ansible 
as something that uh, end users can leverage if they have to deal with something that um, you use Ansible to inter interface with. There are many things you can do with that. Um, just as, um, for example, let's say I want uh, my I want uh, my mom to be able to uh, flip a switch and uh, divert her connection. Instead of uh, going out from Brazil, she goes out from here because she wants to watch a movie that's not there. Just an example on top of my head. And I have a VPN uh, straight through her place. Uh, we are kind of one big network at this point. So she could uh, log in as her here and uh, run something that I have baked in there for her that would do it. Uh, and then in the back end, it would do everything. I don't need to worry about it. That's all there. I mean, I'm pretty sure someone out there is doing lots with it. Uh, that was my personal use case. Um, and also the fact that you can have uh, things on a schedule and you can go back and see because, for example, here, and it's nice because, uh, for example, at work, we have a bunch of jobs that run for weeks and uh, we can just come back here and see, oh, they have been running. I mean, uh, nothing's going on, but you see like how many worked, how many failed and what's going on. And then I can see here, you know, oh, these are all offline when I ran it, um, those two, I know they can't connect because um, the username is not right. And these are turned off. So obviously it, it can't deal with that. So this is not, I mean, you go get all that with Ansible, raw Ansible on the command line. I mean, I can, uh, for example, just, uh, just for the sake of, uh, of example, just go here and run that same playbook and you are going other than the, the two Debian boxes that uh, the credentials here are proper. The ones that fail will fail just the same and you're gonna get the same output. But then again, it's just a gob of text somewhere in this, uh, in this machine. And uh, if I am going to have these on a schedule, I'm probably going to use cron or something. And I mean, for my environment, that's very much fine. But uh, when you reach a certain scale, and it really doesn't need to be that big of a scale, it's there's certainly value. Let's say if I want this running every day, I may want to have a little graph that shows when it failed and when it didn't fail or what the hell is going on. And I could potentially tie that to another one that uh, does a reboot if it needs to. Just a, a run of the new example here to show. The other thing that uh, turns out to be fairly useful is. Um, uh, you folks, I don't know if you guys are familiar with playbooks such as, let's say, this one I have uh, that um, asked me a bunch of questions. So here I have to type. With, um, with this, I can have it uh, here as a template. And instead of uh, typing all of that, I can add those. Uh, I don't remember because it's been a while since I've done it, but uh, there is a way to have it so that when someone runs it, all of those questions I was asking there can be typed or selected from a drop-down list, and then you can have users that have access to it. If you are in an environment where you need someone to, let's say, run a playbook to create a VM on their own, it's a possibility. So um, that was uh, our use case. Uh, we have some folks who need to be able to select uh, different gateways. And uh, that was a way for us to have it so that uh, works for them in case they need it. And again, uh, with some uh, bumps along the way when it comes to the version and everything, it's something I will probably investigate and I will let everyone know if I figure out. It uh, kind of does the trick and um, as long as you understand that it's uh, it's that container Shimogiri do, but uh, it really doesn't matter much because um, if anyone is paying attention, pretty much everything was on source control. So it's not like it's keeping a lot of state. Like ideally, if I change a playbook, I will sync it to Git anyway, so I can just sync from there. And if I ever need to mess with this thing, I can just, um, sync it from there. So it's not really a big, big deal other than those uh, templates, 
which you can export if you want. So it's certainly a good uh, thing if you need a web GUI for Ansible. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to show here. I would now like to ask if anyone have uh, any questions. Hey, question. Yeah. So um, this is the single container dev environment is what they call it. Is the did you get far enough into the Kubernetes deployment to say whether it's more stable? Like, do they promote it as being more, more deploy friendly? They don't view AWX as okay. um, as a production platform. Yeah, like I mean, that's their that's their statement. Yeah. It is development. I mean, again, we have a snapshot from, it's kind of the same architecture, but it's pre-Kubernetes Aberalis, but I mean, it's the same mechanism that you run the make this, make that at work for quite a while now. It's a 2019 version. It's, it works. It's there. Like, I mean, um, it runs for months on end. It's fairly stable. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you can't run in production, but I mean, uh, on a official capacity, they clearly state that this is development, development, development. It's kind of departure from the way Red Hat usually does things. Like it seems, I mean, at least it's my impression that it's uh, fairly, they are fairly like um, the limiting the. Yeah, the yeah well, almost. I'm surprised that there isn't enough of a community to step up and package, produce a polished version, polished version enough. I I don't I find that um, like this works pretty much okay. You can actually change the potato; it's not terribly hard. So if that's uh, what is holding anyone back, I mean, I I picked the fight to keep it. So I am um, I'm not the one to go against the the mighty potato. I got a group fond of it, but. Um, not here, but uh, there is a place where you can change the potato. <laughs> it's out here. But I'm not doing that. I like it. I really do. Psycho potato. Okay. Any questions in the room or any questions online if you want to unmute or type in the chat? There was a couple questions online. Oh, there were. Okay. I think so. Bear said, "Can you, when you're installing it, um, send all that output to a log so you can just oh, search sure. for the password later?" Um, you probably can. I did not try. I'm not that smart. I also that would obliterate any any failed attempt at being funny. I mean, not that mm -hmm. I managed to be, but. Uh, it's the kind of thing that by the time you realize you should have done that, it's already too late. Too late. <laughs> and I mean, uh, I was happy that I had a, a terminal with a frame buffer that amounts to like uh, eternity and beyond. <laughs> but uh, if it uh, if that hasn't been the case, again, not a biggie because uh, let's uh, quickly go back to this guy and uh, you can just run that. And then you create a different user that's also a super user, and then you can just uh, delete that or do whatever you want. It's not a deal breaker. But again, um, I wanted to make a cheaty joke. I don't, but I mean, with that, I honestly do not see the point to spit that out there, but they did. I just found it entertaining because at first I didn't spot the password. So I was running that, and then it turns out there was an admin user there. I'm like, how the hell did that got in here? I was confused because I created a an user called, let's say, AWX, and then I log in, and there's an admin there. I'm like, that's shady. Turns out that uh, that's where it showed up. So I just thought I would mention it. But um, yeah, worse things uh, can happen. You create another one, and then you go in and delete it. Or yeah, you can certainly do that. But again, when I realized, um, that would be in the past, so. Uh, Chris has his hand up. Go ahead, Chris. For sure, super interesting. Um, you mentioned, like the use case that you mentioned where you wanna essentially create VMs and try and make an interface 
for oh, it's, it's oh, weird to hear an echo of myself here. Uh, uh, so essentially, just this what you described is very close to how I would want to use a product like this. But you also mentioned that it's not production ready. I'm not sure if this was mentioned early in the presentation, but if this isn't quote unquote production, then is there an equivalent product or something else that you'd recommend instead? Uh, when I say production ready, um, this is uh, kind of ties into um, enterprise politics uh, and, uh, you know, um, enterprisey kind of thing where I mean, if you ask me if it works, it's production ready. I don't give a single yoda of a damn. I mean, uh, YOLO, you know. Like, um, go for it. Uh, fuck it. Ship it. Let it burn. And deal with the fallout if it comes. If it doesn't, try harder until it blows up. That's kind of my jive. I don't give a much of a damn about it. And, um, you know. What is the Red Hat name for this? Uh, Ansible Automation Platform. I th I don't know if that's the same as Tower or if it was renamed from Ansible Tower. Yeah, Tower Tower was renamed to Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. So they yeah. don't it, they don't use Tower anymore. Yeah. So, but when I say oh, it's not production ready, it's uh, more in the sense that I mean, uh, if you work in a corporation that uh, has a size that's like significant enough for them to give a damn about this kind of thing, that's the thing. You're not gonna present the psycho potato to them and say this is fine. They are probably gonna be a little uneasy about it, but. It is fairly stable. It works. You can use it. Um, honestly, like, um, again, my workplace is not the biggest place in the world, but it's certainly not tiny weeny. And uh, we run lots with this thing and it works reasonably fine. It's uh, nothing out of the ordinary for m most uh, folks. I mean, who deal with this kind of thing, it's uh, just... Um, there are procedures to migrate. It just requires some uh, hand holding and stuff. It's it's just not um, a, a railed experience like uh, many projects that are like, oh, this is, let's say, Fedora Linux. Okay, it's not supported in the sense that it's free software. But you can expect at this point to have a pretty much uh, trouble-free upgrade experience. If you don't, of course, that's on you. You've got to deal with it. More often than not, things work. You can expect some level of uh, quality. They do not make mm, that uh, guaranteed. They kind of stress it a little bit more that it's rough around the edges. But I have been poking this for a few weeks now. I would say approaching like a few months at this point. And so far, I didn't find anything other than the fancy logo that you can easily change that uh, is a deal breaker. So. Is it production ready officially? No. Unofficially, it's fine. I mean, if it's mission critical, you probably had the funds to pay for it. So might as well go ahead and do it. And don't let your screen block. That's not polite. OK. So yeah, I don't know if I addressed your question. Uh, the gist of it is um, try it. Yeah, yeah, that answers my question completely. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything? Any other questions? Online in room. How many hosts have you run it on? And I noticed it said Django going forward. So, like in the as it was scrolling past. So, if you give it enough RAM, does it cack on a couple hundred hosts? Uh, ah, that's a really good question. I don't know. I, I don't know where I am right now. It's running here. So let me just uh, take a quick look at that. Uh, I do know that I had it on four gigs, and I tried to like uh, do the whole container <laughs> kind of thing, and I ran out of uh, RAM pretty hard when I was like doing the whole build thing. That's when I bumped it to eight. At this point, with nothing on it, but uh, I don't. They, I think they do have some numbers. Uh, I can try and check. Just give me a moment. Uh, that's a good question. But uh, I would say, as it stands here, uh, let me show you. Oh, OK. So yeah, so uh, we are at uh, 4 gigs, 4 gigs uh, used. But it did blow past that when it was building, which is kind of expected. But um, again, I I don't expect it to to blow past that uh, unless you're like taxing it very hard. I can take a look at how many 
have an instance that works its older version, but uh, it runs a lot of things on schedule. I can check how much it has for RAM. How many hosts is that at work? Ah, it's, uh, I don't recall, but I think around 50 or 60. It's not a terribly high number, but it's not uh, nothing. And it runs quite a, a bunch of things, and they do take some time. But I mean, I would assume most of that, I mean, the delta, that's me talking out of my bottom here, the delta of uh, the, the difference between uh, memory consumption between AWX and um, Ansible itself is uh, the whole WAG uh, stuff. And uh, I mean, um, at this point, you're running Ansible, so whatever it is on top of that. Now, Ansible kind of runs on uh, a beefy potato, but still a potato. Like, I think two gigs of RAM is what I have, and I never really cared. So I would say eight gigs would probably get you <coughs> far. But um, there may be some science on that, but I am not sure at all. I do know that I tried to build it on four gigs and it blew up on my face. That I can tell. So I gave it eight and then it worked. Cool. All right. Thanks, Alberto. Good presentation.